Hey guys, Delta Kanakian here, and today I'm going to talk about my top 10 favorite video games of all time, with the next generation of consoles just around the corner. I figure now is as good as time as any to, uh, to update this list, and I don't think there's many people left from, uh, from my old channel who would have seen the last time I did a top 10 favorite games video. So here it is, as of uh, April 2013, my top 10 favorite video games of all time. Coming in at number 10 is NHL 99. Now, it wasn't the first video game I played, but it was the first I owned, the first my parents bought for me, and uh, I have so many memories of that game. Uh, I still remember the intro video, like, the first time I had seen it was this morning. Uh, I can even recite some of the play-by-play -play from it, though I won't right now. Um, you know, so many memories. It, like, the first time I played it, uh, I actually cried because I couldn't figure out how to change the teams. It was the Detroit Red Wings and the Washington Capitals, if I remember correctly. And I couldn't figure out how to change the teams, and I cried because I wanted to play as the Canucks and someone else because the Canucks are my favorite team. Thankfully, my dad figured it out. And it's uh, it's safe to say that I'm a lot better at games now than I was back then. Coming in at number 9 is Crash Team Racing. Now, I'm not sure if I this is the game I played the most of on the PS1. But it's probably the one I had the most fun with over at my friend's house, because he had the PlayStation 1. Um, I'd go over almost every day, and we'd play games, and that one was just awesome. Like, I, I enjoyed the Crash Bandicoot series. We played all of them. Crash Bandicoot is still one of my favorite game characters ever. And uh, this this game was effectively Sony's Mario Kart. It was, it, it was challenging, but it was fun. And funnily enough, I still haven't beat that game, even though I own it uh, through the PlayStation Store and now the PS1 Classics. So, uh, maybe I haven't gotten that much better at games after all. Maybe games have just gotten easier. Coming in at number 8 is Assassin's Creed 2, coming up to the current generation of consoles. It was a game I wasn't sure about after how boring the original was, but I gave it a shot simply because it was set in Italy. Um... And Ubisoft hit it out of the park. They took all the awesome ideas from the first game, refined them, cut off all the fat, all the stuff that didn't work. And, uh, of course, you know, being in a really detailed uh, Renaissance-era Italy and having one of the most memorable leading men of all time in Ezio Auditore really, really amped the series up and uh, made this game one of my favorites of all time. It was the first time I truly could not put a game down. I had to force myself to stop so I didn't beat it in, like, three days. Coming in at number seven is Ratchet & Clank Up Your Arsenal. This was the game that truly made me love platformers. I had never played one... Well, I had played Crash Bandicoot and, and uh, Spyro before this, but I never really... I guess I never really enjoyed them that much. Uh, maybe because I sucked at them. But this game, all the just awesome guns and gadgets and the characters who are all really unique and funny. The writing was great. Uh, and then the multiplayer that I spent a ton of time playing with friends. Uh, it, it, it really was one of the best games ever made, in my opinion. Uh, and then the hidden demo for, for Sly 2. That made me love that series as well and really threw me into what was the golden age for platformers. Coming in at number 6 is Burnout. Paradise, one of my first PS3 games. It was one of, I think, five games I had for the first year and a half, two years that I owned a PlayStation 3. I didn't have many games. So, I put hundreds and hundreds of hours into this game. Unfortunately, I've lost two 100% game completion save files because of hard drive issues. But it's still a ton of fun to play. It, it, it has so much to do with or without all the DLC and... Um, you know, it's one of those rare games this generation that is equal parts fun and challenging, and it never, ever really feels cheap. It's as close to the perfect game as I think anyone's gotten to in recent memory. Coming in at number five is a new addition to the list, Journey. I, I honestly don't know how to describe this game. It's so completely different from anything else I've ever played, and... um. It's a truly special game. I may or may not have shed a few tears at the end. Uh, and, but it's not a long game by any means. It's it's a game that once once you pick it up, you cannot put it down. It's absolutely gorgeous to look at. It's simple, but it's effective. And it really... It it gets your emotions. It, it pulls at your heartstrings. It gets you really into it. And it's, it's a simple premise. You're just getting from point A to point B. And for whatever reason, it's it is something special. 
Um, yeah. Coming in at number four is Star Wars Battlefront 2. This is a rare breed of sequels that takes everything from the first game, improves on it, and then adds new stuff. Uh, I was a huge Star Wars fan growing up. I still am today. So as agonizing as the wait for a Battlefront 3 that may never actually come now, this game is one of my favorites. It was a ton of fun to play. It struck a great balance between fun and challenging. I keep using those words. Um, it's something that seems so common during like the PS2 era. You don't see it that often in games these days. They're either like really cheap or really easy. Uh, but Battlefront 2 was, was awesome. It was fun. It was great. Uh, coming in at number three is Black, which was silly, it was bombastic, it was over the top, it was crazy, it was awesome. It did to first-person shooters what Burnout did to racing games. It completely tore it apart. It really brought a cinematic feel with some of the best graphics and sound design. It was gun porn. The story, who gave? Who cared about the story? You were running around shooting and blowing stuff up. It was so much fun. And it was also the first M-rated game my parents actually let me play, so... It has all the fond memories of playing the game, but also of earning my parents' trust that they felt I was mature enough to handle these games, which is, it's a nice feeling. It really is a nice feeling. Uh, coming in at number two, one of the first open world games I ever played. I don't play Grand Theft Auto, guys. Mercenaries Playground of Destruction. Never heard about this game until I saw uh, a demo, a demo disc out of a PlayStation magazine. I, like, the amount of times I played that demo, it was so much fun, it, it was, it was just dumb. I, and I bought the game, and I've played through it a few times, uh, I should play through it again, but it is so much fun just to use the cheats, and to call in all sorts of crazy airstrikes and blow the crap out of everything. I don't even remember what the story's about, it was just another one of those games that was really, really fun to play, and I have so many great memories of, uh, of just exploring. Coming in at number one, drum roll. I didn't give a drum roll. It's Dead Space. <laughs> one of my first platinum trophies on the PS3. Uh, I've played through it at least ten times. I've actually lost track. I think it's ten times. I remember seeing the E3 trailer in 2008 and thinking, you know, holy shit, I cannot play this game. This is going to be too scary because I hate, hated, I hated scary games. Um, but I bought it just on a whim in 2008. I saw it in the store. I'm like, screw it. I'm going to grab it. The trailer was so good. Holy crap. It's, it is, it is, it was my first foray into the survival horror genre. And it, I think it's still the best, uh, horror game to come out in years, if not ever. Uh, I have so many memories of that game. And even though I like the sequels, none of them hold up to, uh, to the original for me. Anyways. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you want to list your favorite games in the comments below, go ahead. Let's talk about that. Um, but yeah, Next Generation is coming around the corner. Hopefully there'll be some new games to get in that top 10 list, you know, 10 years from now. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.